Today, I want to talk about Jalen Waddle, where he fits among the greatest wide receivers of all time at Alabama and his availability ahead of the game against Ohio State for the national championship and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about Jalen Waddle. I want to talk about Jalen Waddle because since it has been alluded to that he could be available for the national championship game on Monday, We've seen sports discussion around him that resembles that of Baba Yaga and John Wick. Meaning, they call him Baba Yaga not because he is the boogeyman, but because he is the person you send to kill the boogeyman. And if you're taking into account what Jalen Waddle is capable of, you can see how he fits the description of the boogeyman, right? This is a man who, when he touches the football, is a threat to take it to the house. Every single time. Last two years, caught 58 balls, 10 touchdowns, right? His freshman season, 45 catches, 7 TDs, right? That's nearly a catch for a touchdown every six chances that he touches the ball. Now, add in there what we know about his speed, what we know about his charisma on the field, charisma on the field being what you can do with the ball in your hands. Can you make men miss? What's your agility? Charisma on the field. And you can see how he's one of the greats. But where does he actually line up? Now, when I did this list, I started with Nick Saban's Alabama because I believe those are the best wide receivers to ever play at Alabama. And I don't think it's close. And you have to remember, this is what modern football is. Nobody's looking at Batman and saying, hey, I want to go watch those old Adam West things. Yeah, your dad does. Your granddad does. But not you. You're watching The Dark Knight. You're watching Batman Begins. You're watching The Dark Knight Rises. Hell, you might even give Ben Affleck a passing glance and go watch Batman vs. Superman. But you're not going to go watch Michael Keaton. No. The special effects aren't that good. The story isn't that good. We're not hokey about our comic books. We're modern about them, just like our football. So I'm not really going to contend with any of these wide receivers that were around before Nick Saban decided it was time not just to recruit at the highest level, but to modernize the offense into one that was vertical. Which is why I think when we're talking about the top five, man, we got to start with Henry Ruggs. And I know that's so recent that he just played at Alabama. But knowing what he was capable of and how he could take the top off the defense, it's hard to argue with it. Being that short and being that explosive, being able to dunk the ball as he can, it's unfair. But he was never the focal point of the offense. He was never the go-to wide receiver. Not even when he was the fastest wide receiver. That went to Jerry Judy, right? Which is why I got Jerry Judy at four. I get it. It's a Blitnikoff Award winner. He had 68 catches for over 1,100 yards in this season when he won the Blitnikoff Award. He's great in the slot. Many have called him one of the best route runners to ever leave college in recent memory. But he wasn't the guy that everybody needed to key on, right? There's still Henry Ruggs over there that you have to put your eyes on. There's Jalen Waddle over there. You got to put your eyes on. There's Devontae Smith over there. You got to put your eyes on. It's why I look at a guy like Amari Cooper and I have an appreciation for the possession wide receiver that he turned out to be. 124 catches in 2014 in 14 games. It's a man who had learn the algorithms of a Rubik's Cube so that he could solve them, can play outstanding games of chess. But he's not a take-the-top-off-the-defense kind of guy. He was primarily used out on the numbers, especially toward the end. And Aaron Colvin put the shackles on him in the Sugar Bowl. Can't discount that. If a cornerback can take you away, you can't be the best wide receiver to ever play. So I look at Devontae Smith there at number two. And I look around and I see 98 catches, 1,500 yards, Heisman Trophy. The first man to ever win the Heisman Trophy as a wide receiver since 1991. Usually, a wide receiver being invited to the Heisman ceremony is its own reward. This year, he was not only the guy to win it, he was far and away the guy to win it. In a year where Trevor Lawrence was 
eligible, finished second. Kyle Trask put together an outstanding regular season. He's in there. And then, of course, Mac Jones, the guy throwing Devontae Smith the passes in the first place. But it shows you just how explosive the man can be. Now, right now, I have Jalen Waddell as a 1B next to Julio Jones as 1A because Julio Jones is everything that Nick Saban ever wanted in a wide receiver. Quintoris, Lopez, Julio to his boys, Jones is that dude. And he is the wide receiver that forced people to take Alabama seriously and forced them to the top of the mountaintop. That dude is the dude of dudes. He can do whatever you want him to do. He can be possession wide receiver. He can take the top off the defense. And then you can throw in there Calvin Ridley if you wanted to. It didn't make my list, right? But we got to see how good he was at Atlanta if we didn't already know how good he was at Alabama. But when I look at Waddle and what he could mean, alongside a dude like Devontae Smith, this is how I put Waddle above Smith. Many of us who watch the sport would tell you there were four Heisman Trophy finalists on the 2020 Alabama offense. The guy who won the award, Devontae Smith. Quarterback, Mac Jones. Running back, Najee Harris. And Jalen Waddell. Difference is, Jalen Waddell blew out his ankle early in the season. Didn't play enough games to really get considered. But he was so good during that short amount of time. And he was so good in the previous years, that we really did say that's the best player in college football. Devontae Smith turns out he can return punts and he can return kicks too. But if Waddle's healthy, we know who the number one dude is. And if Waddle can play against Ohio State, he has an opportunity to prove it. All right, that's it for me.